story is, you know, it was like stop and go, but you know, you got the, all the picture of the big picture of the story, right? Uh, when Israel was divided uh, into north and south, and the story is about the time of King Jehoshaphat in the south, and who's the king in the north? Uh, and the, in the, the reign of king named Jehoshaphat in the south, and the, the king was in, in the north was Ahab. Hey, let's look at the next slide. Okay. Can you see? No. Is it hard, hard to see? We're okay. Right here. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so this is Saul, David, and Solomon, right? So this is one country of Israel, right? And then it divided into two split it into two. 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 North and south. 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 Yeah. And in south, we have right here. I think this is uh, Jehoshaphat. Okay, if you go up, 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 up is this. This is Ahab. Okay, so this is uh, the timetable that I refer to, and you know this is way before the you know the invasion of Babylon, right? And this is uh, the the north was destroyed by by whom? Assyria. Okay. And south lasted a little bit longer years. than north. Okay. So total is about, you know, I think uh, 350 years uh, at the bottom. Anyway, so where is the Jehoshaphat? We just look, looked at it, you know. Jondo Sanin put the red line, right? Jehoshaphat is there. During this time, who was the king? Ahab, right? And First of all, King Jehoshaphat was the fourth king out of 20 kings, okay, in southern Judah. And there are three good major kings, okay? And in the table, there are four kings, but there are three major good kings. One is Hizgiah, Hizgiah, right? And then Jehoshaphat and Josiah. Those three kings are good ones, and today, you know, King Jehoshaphat's name is not well known to us as a good king. But uh, if we, you know, look, look, at, look into him carefully, you will realize he was a great king, okay? Good king in the eyes of God, okay? So when we read first, you know, and second Kings, and first and second Chronicles, it is a, when we read those historical books, those are real histories, okay? What it means is, this is what really happened, okay? 2,008 years ago. And even though it happened 2,008 years ago, the spiritual law is exactly the same as now, right? So we can learn the spiritual principles from, from you know, these stories that we can apply them today too, okay? So let's go back to the story and in chapter 19, you know, uh, Second Chronicles, King Jehoshaphat was just returning from doing something, okay? He was doing something and he just returned it and the seer, the prophet, Jehu appeared, okay? Jehu appeared and said, okay, next slide, okay? Let's read should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Okay, Lord is saying, why do you help the wicked? Why do you love, you know, the, the, the one God hates, right? Why do you do that? Let's keep going. Therefore, the wrath of God is upon you. There's going to be, you know, consequences out of that. Wrath of God is upon you, okay? What does it mean? It means King Jehoshaphat, he did something wrong in the eyes of God, right? What did he do wrong? He made a in-law relationship with King Ahab, okay? The king of North Israel, okay? King Jehoshaphat married 
To whom? The daughter of Ahab, whose name was Adalia, right? And the daughter of King Ahab was Adalia, and so the father-in-law Ahab asked this king Jehoshaphat to join war, and he returned from the war. Okay, so because of these reasons, God's wrath came upon to King Jehoshaphat. Okay, so but at at that time there was good things about King Jehoshaphat. The seer Jehu added, "Let's read." Never the rest. Let's read. Never the rest. God thinks found in you, in that you have removed the wooden images from the land and have prepared your heart to seek God. What did he do? Two things, right? One, he removed idols, 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 wooden idols, and he also did what? He earnestly seeking God. Okay, those two things, God kept, you know, good things in God's mind, right? So you should realize at this point, we do our best, you know, whatever we do for in our daily lives, we do our best for our best benefit, right? You know, whether should I go to um, Friday worship services or should I go to... The you know workplaces to get some money. It depends on your best choices, right? For your benefit, best benefit, right? So God is looking at us, and God is um, accumulate good things in His mind. Okay, so you should realize that whatever we do in our daily lives, God is watching us. There are some things that especially remains in God's heart. Okay. Whatever you do, something remains, you know, if you just, you know, should I eat jajangmyeon or jjampong, it doesn't count, okay? <laughs> but, special things, you know, before God. God, keep that in, in God's heart. Ah, He is good and He is bad. Things like that, okay? So, let's read one of the examples, okay? First Samuel 15, 2, thus says the Lord of hosts. I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he, when he came up from Egypt. And God had really, you know, bad feeling about against Amalek. Amalek ambushed the Israelites when they were out of Egypt, right? This is a sneaky thing, right? So God hated it. So he said that in next verse, now go and attack Amalek, okay? To actually King, King Saul, he, like God commanded it. Anyway, in Jeremiah 2.2, 2, uh, 2, 2, God said, Go and proclaim the hearing of Jerusalem. Let's read. I remember the devotion of your youth, how as a bride you love me and follow me through the desert, the, through the land not song. God is like a human being, you know. He has emotions. Mm -hmm. And God remembers all the things that, uh, that he had so, some disappointment in his mind. Or God also keeps all the good things and good memories. Now God is remembering the Israelites as a bride in the wilderness when, when they followed God's directions with a pillar of, you know, cloud and with a pillar of, pillar of fire during the night, right? In the wilderness. So, another one, okay? Malachi 3.16. Let's read. So, a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. So, God wrote, you know, your, your name if you Meditate his name and if you fear him, okay? God, write down, oh, this is, you know, Alisa, Hyunju, Joseph, Hyunjung, everybody. Once you, you know, give a good impression to God, okay? So, at the start of the new year, 
2022, we need to be very keen on this issue, okay? So we need to keep doing whatever God can be pleased, right? And we need to find out what God is disappointed in us and remove them by finding them and repenting them in the name of Jesus, okay? You need to find out what did I do wrong, you know, in the eyes of God and we need to repent and clear it off because we have blood of Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And by doing so, our 2024 would be spiritually prosperous, okay? Amen. 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 Okay, next slide. In the next chapter, you know, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, there was a critical problem and life-threatening problem against Judah and King Jehoshaphat, okay? There was a critical problem. Let's read. One, it happened after that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon Ammon and others with them beside the Ammonites came battle against Jehoshaphat. Okay, if you look at the map, okay, where is <laughs> southern it's Judah? I got it's, English. Yeah, yeah, he, he's got English. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Judah one. Judah is right there. And where is Moab? Moab is right here. And Ammon. And this is, if you read through the you know, whole story then these guys Adam, Adamites, mm -hmm. they also joined in this you know, enemy allies mm -hmm. so all the you know, surrounding countries they are against you know, King Jehoshaphat okay? and Judah so allies of enemies around you know, Judah came together and back, they are trying to set up the you know, battle against the Jehoshaphat and Judah. And if you look into the verse carefully, there are, you know, other countries too. So all these countries, okay, they symbolize Satan. Okay? And you should realize that God also uses Satan, allows Satan's attacks in our lives to wake us up. Okay? <laughs> And now King Jehoshaphat faced a critical life-threatening problem in his life. And in fact, God, it, God's will is, God's, you know, the bottom of God's heart is trying to remove, remove or realize what Jehoshaphat did wrong against God. I mean, finding hidden sin in, at the bottom of Jehoshaphat's mind. Now, it was, you know, Jehoshaphat's decision now, okay? So depending on how he, he, you know, dealt with this problem, it would be either, it could be ended up with destruction or it could be stepping stone of, you know, to get blessings, okay? So did King uh, overcome the situation or what? Did he end up with destruction? He overcame, right? Mm -hmm. He overcame the problem and he and his people, Ju people of Judah got abundant blessings by winning this war, right? And in verse 25, they collected the plunders for how many days? Three days. Three days, three days. yeah, three days. And they, they have peaceful realm of the Jehoshaphat, the King Jehoshaphat, you know. Uh, for God gave him the rest all around the con you know, country in verse 30. Anyway, so the critical life-threatening problem became a stepping stone to get abundant blessings. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen? So how did it happen, you know? How did it happen? We should know the details of what King Jehoshaphat did and follow the way and we need to follow the way he did, did it. How he dealt the problem, we need to know in details. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to tell you about. Turning curses into blessings. Amen. 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 So next slide. King Joseph, Joseph was afraid at first. Who's not going to be afraid? Everybody is against you mm -hmm. and trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, imagine that and... And when he heard the news that all the you know, you know, allied forces of four countries, 
neighboring countries, they are launching all-out attack, you know? And then, and then what did he do first? He fixed his eyes on God. What did he do? Let's read it. Fix his eyes on God. Let's read it. To 12, to 2012. Oh, oh our, our God, God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Jehovah was really humble and he said, I don't know what to do. God, I just look at you and will you not judge them? Okay. What does it mean by fixing eyes on God? To, uh, this means like focusing only, you know, my own relationship with God. Okay? And to realize my, my own appearance, naked appearance before God. Mm -hmm. Okay? So people must, you know, first have light. When, when you find out your sins, you got to have the true light from God mm. to find out hidden sins in you, right? Mm. So that you can get to know your real problems, okay? And what is wrong? What needs to be corrected? And what God is trying to upgrade with me? So without the light of God, you cannot find it. Mm. So, we tend to find out our own, own solutions in, in this kind of situations, okay? When you have a big problem, and we tend to find out our own solutions, right? Yes. So, did it have uh, other possible solutions uh, for this situation or not? Yes, he, he had. Okay, let me tell you, okay? Next slide. According to, you know, couple of you know uh, chapters ahead of this today's word of God 17 12 to 19 I'm not gonna read it but you know okay I'm, I'm gonna let you know Jehoshaphat had strong you know military forces okay okay so Jeho like so the Jehoshaphat became increasingly powerful he was ready for any situation he was a very you know organized king and he was ready for any situation. And if you look at here, Adna, he had 300,000 mighty men of valor. Valor is, you know, uh, men of courage, okay? And look at that, 300,000. And Jehohanan, with the captain, 280,000, okay? You know, this is not, you know, Small number, thousands of thousands, okay? And Amasha, he had 200,000, okay? And Eliada, he had 200,000, and Jehozabed, 180,000 prepared for war, okay? Can somebody add up all, all these people? Million okay. 60,000. Million one hundred sixty thousand, you know, warriors in his hand. Mm. Okay, and if if I were him, you know, in his <laughs> position, I I would command them, army, be ready for the battle. Okay, <laughs> other countries are trying to invade us. You know, if you have one million, one million. 1060 you know uh, 160,000 soldiers have in your hand right you are gonna have you know put your mind on your your army right but even though King Jehoshaphat had possible solutions for his solutions yeah I mean the problems he tried find the source of the problem in relationship with God mm -hmm. amen this is how he fixed his eyes on Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Next slide. Another thing that he, uh, that he did was proclaimed a fasting. 
okay, national fasting throughout all, all of you know, Judah. And it was not only a critical problem for the king, but also a problem for people of Judah too, right? Mm -hmm. When they lose, they, they got killed and they, they lose all the possessions, right? So, when we fast together, it multiplies the power, okay? That's why sometimes we do fasting together in our giant church, right? We have sign-up sheets around and then we sign up and we do the you know, fasting together. So it applies to us in these days. At the, you know, it works in these days too. And even though it was working in 2008 years ago, it is working in these days too. Mm -hmm. So when you see the you know, fasting sheet around, Please sign up <laughs> to defeat the, you know, the, the, the power of Satan, okay? Amen. Amen. So, and thirdly, Jehoshaphat knew the relevant words of God, mm -hmm. okay? And he used God's promises in his prayers. And when he prayed to God, and he, he, he feared, and now he, he's turned to pray to God. It's kind of hard to see with the small letters. But King Jehoshaphat, he knew and referred Solomon's prayer to God in his pray prayers. Okay? So uh, let me give you the evidence. Uh, this is what Solomon prayed to God in you know, temple inauguration. Okay? When there is a famine in the land and pestilence or um, blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, when, when their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, when each one knows his own burden and his own grief and spread out his hand to this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of the son, sons of man. And this is what Solomon prayed to God in his inauguration, temple inauguration ceremony. And this is what, you know, King Jehoshaphat prayed to God. And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in, in it for your name, saying, If disaster, disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple and cry out to you in in our affliction and you will hear and save amen, amen. so how did he know all these these promises of of you know god because he joined bible study <laughs> okay that's that's why amen. you need to read the bible and join the bible study amen in your critical time, you should pray and you should, you know, remind God the promise that God promised toward us, right? So, you know, smartly, King Jehoshaphat used, you know, reminded, you know, God's promises toward you and he used it. So God cannot escape, you know, <laughs> he has to save these people, right? So the King Jehoshaphat explained his, another thing is he explained his problem in details, mm -hmm. okay? So the enemies were not destroyed because God's, you know, God's command to Israel when they were on the way to Canaan. So now they become enemies, okay? They, when they were out of Egypt, God said, do not, you know, invade Moab. Do not invade Adam. And Jehoshaphat is telling God, God, you said don't you know destroy them and we just you know let them be there. 
Now they are attacking us. It's all because of you. Something like that, right? So, we have to know what happened in detail. Now they became enemies to, to me. So, uh, enemies to Israelites. And let's, let's look at, you know, uh, verse 10. This is, this is God's responses. Let's read. Uh, next one. Don't be... Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't write down the you know, verses. Anyway, there comes God's responses uh, among the assembly of people. Okay? And one person, people, you know, named... Jahaziel, Jahaziel, how do you pronounce it? Jahaziel, right? Jahaziel, he said that, you know, three things. One, don't be afraid, don't be dismayed. Amen. Two, battle is God's, Amen. not yours. Amen. But, go out, you have to go out. You, you know, even though God, this is God's battle, you don't sit in your room, okay? You go out to the battlefield, to see salvation of God. Amen? Amen? These three things came to God through Jehaziel. Okay, so now look at the king, Jehoshaphat's reaction to God's responses. And he and his people of Judah, they, what, they, what did they do? Bow they bowed down their faces to the ground, ground in presence of God. Right? And they worship the Lord. Right? They showed their, their respect to God. Right? So even though they were, you know, okay, on top of this, okay, this is, you know, what King Jehoshaphat did. Okay? Voluntarily. Okay? Even though there was no direction from God or, or any prophet, King Jehoshaphat did two more things. This is like, you know, buy one, get two, free, something like that, okay? Voluntarily, you know, to King Jehoshaphat did, he urged, you know, all the people to believe in God and his prophet, okay? And he commanded, you know, anyway, in verse 2020, did I write that down? Okay, let's read. Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in His prophet, and you shall be prosperous. Okay? You shall be what? Prosperous. Established, you shall be prosperous. Okay? So, this is one thing that he did. And King Jehoshaphat also did, he appointed a Praise team before the army, okay? And and they when they started singing, when they gave praise to God, the enemies they fought against each other and they self-destroyed, okay? <laughs> they were self-destroyed, they fight against each other, the enemies itself they destroyed by themselves. Okay? So this is the power of praise and this and the praise moves the army of God and to defeat you know their enemies and our enemies too. When you give praise to God, you know angel of God moves and destroy your enemies. Amen. 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 Now the five allies, oh my, oh, I mean the four allies Hostile countries broke out, you know, their internal strife, okay? And killed each other and they, they just killed everyone. And, the, and, and then, you know, they, Israelites, they went out, they took the plunders. How many days? Three days. Three days. After, afterwards, his God gave the peace to all the countries and Jehoshaphat's kingdom was very peaceful, okay? And it means that God's heart is completely reconciled with the king Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah during his, you know, realm, okay? And lastly, 
how could he make such a excellent decisions? You know, we need to know how could he do that. You know, if I warn him, you know, oh, army, be ready, <laughs> and and if he did it, I, I think he's not gonna you know have the victory out of this war. Though anyway, before facing the critical problem, he was actually ready for it. You know. And when he was becoming, uh, became a king of Judah, is that the next slide? Okay. First thing, okay, he, okay, let's read the, the small blip. He decided, oh, it's in my note, okay. He decided to follow the way of King David. And, okay. Let's read the you know Second Chronicles seventeen three. Let's read it all together. Now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the former ways of the father David. He did not seek the Baal, but sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments and not according to the acts of Israel. So he did not follow the you know idol worshiping. Okay. He just followed King David, and he just, you know, decided to follow the ways of King David, and and the acts of, you know, he did not follow the acts of Israel. So he was earnestly following the way of God, right? And the next thing that he did was he removed what idols. Okay, let's read chapter seventeen six. And his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he removed the high places and wooden images from Judah. Right? He removed idols, right? Next slide. Thirdly, he offered Bible studies to the people. Ah, you know, some of you may not like Bible studies, but <laughs> Bible study is quite important, you know, because whenever I give you a sermon, then I, I, I give, you know, very high importance, you know, good importance in Bible studies. Okay, let's read chapter 77. Also in the third year of his reign, he sent his leaders. So King Joseph sent his leaders, ben Hail, Obadiah, Zachariah, Nathaniel, Micaiah, to, to teach the cities of Judah. Let's keep going. And with them, he said, Levites, Shemaiah, Nathaniah, Zabadiah, Ashel, Shemarim, Jehovonathan, Adoniah, Tobiah, Tobiah, and Tobiah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> El Elishama and Jehoram the priest. Okay, so so many priests and so many Levites and you know yes. teachers. He sent all the cities and they opened up Bible study yeah. from King. If there were is a, you know Bible study from you know a President of the United States, then there's an, there's gonna be a lot of people, right? <laughs> To get favor of, you know, pre <laughs> president, <laughs> so, something like that. Even though they went there, you know, voluntarily to love, uh, to love God, to get to know God, or to get favor of King, it doesn't matter. You know, they opened Bible studies and people joined. And another one, he so... strengthened the guarantee of normal life with a strong military power. We just, you know, looked at it. One million, right? Mm -hmm. One million armies and because of this strong military uh, uh, forces, we could have, you know, normal life that we can give worship to God in a safe place like this, right? Imagine that if you are in, in you know, in Ukraine or, you know, Israel, then it's gonna be really hard to give worship services, right? Mm -hmm. And if the bomb, you know, blow blows up in here and there, then we cannot give, you know, worship services in a safe, you know, mind and peaceful mind, right? So, King Jehoshaphat he 
placed strong military power and he prepared. So that's how Jehoshaphat was ready for this critical problem. Okay? Okay? So these are basis of Jehoshaphat's faith before he faced the critical problem. So we should be ready for the critical problems at any time. Okay? Yeah. Right. So what are the you know, four things to, to be ready for the critical problems? One, decided we, we need to decide to follow Jesus. Amen. Amen? Amen. And we need to remove idols. Amen. And we need to join Bible, Bible studies. Amen. And we got to have a very stable job. Amen. Okay? And pray for it and get one. Amen. Okay, you got to have a stable job that you can serve your God very well. Amen? Amen. 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 Next slide. Yeah. Okay, you will love it. Okay. <laughs> so King Jehoshaphat faced a critical problem and these are his responses. Okay? He fixed his eyes on God and let's read it. Okay? Announce the national fast. Okay? Use relevant promises of God in his prayers in detail. Okay, detailly, I mean, the, you give a details of your prayer concerns to God and with the God promises that God has to, you know, respond to you, okay? Okay, bow down their faces to the ground before God. You have to show your respect to God, okay? And then... First, people of Judah to believe in God, and then appointed a praise team to give praise to God. And actually, King Jehoshaphat was ready for a critical problem. Okay, next slide. King Jehoshaphat has baseline faith like this. Okay, decide to follow the way of King and the way of God, and remove idols in you. And Bible studies. Bible studies. And then finally, ensure sure stable, stable and normal life. Amen. Okay? So by doing so, we should be ready for any critical problems in your life. Once you have it, you follow the King Jehoshaphat's way. Amen. 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 This is the word of God. Amen. Amen.